right? This is your hypercube. So I have this node, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, right? And the node below 0 will be 4, 5, 6, and 7, right? These are the nodes, right? Just to be clear on the notation, what I'm going to do is on node 0, right? I will have the data 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, right? And to be clear, what element I'm talking about, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label this with 0, So what does this mean? This is the 0th element on the 0th node. This is your element, which element I'm talking about. And this index is which node this element originally belonged to, right? Okay. So what am I going to have on node 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, right? So I'm not going to write all of them down, but you'll get the idea, right? So let's look at what would be there on node 4. So you'll have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. But I'm going to put the index 4 over here to just say that this is the element on node number 4, right? Okay. How do we implement reduce scatter on the hypercube? So what this algorithm does is, in the first iteration, it's going to exchange data along one of the dimensions, right? So we are looking at the dimension first where the first bit differs, okay? The first bit is different. What is the data I'm going to exchange? So just try to extend the algorithm of the mesh. Let's just look at a simple case 0 and 4. What is 0 going to send to 4 and what is 4 going to send to 0? half of its data, right? Which half? So just think of it this way. What is 4 responsible for? What is 0 responsible for? Which dimension are they changing in? So you take a cut in that dimension, right? So if you cut perpendicular to the link joining 0 and 4, right? What is separated? You get 0, 1, 2, 3 on one side and 4, 5, 6, 7 on the other side, right? So what is 4 going to send to 0? First half. And what is 0 going to send to 4? Yeah. So this is the exchange that will happen. Okay. Now tell me at the end of first iteration, what is going to be the data on 0 and what is going to be the data on 4? Yeah. So it will have both the 0 elements, 2 1 elements, 2 2 elements and two, three elements, right? And what is it going to do now? So it can simply add up the zero elements, the one elements, the two elements, and the three elements, right? So instead of writing it like this, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to write zero, one, two, three, and the zeroth node now has the zeroth element for zero plus four, right? The first element for 0 plus 4, second element for 0 plus 4, and the third element for 0 plus 4, right? And similarly, what does node number 4 have? It will have 4, 5, 6, and 7, again, for the same ones, right? For the same nodes, 0 plus 4, 0 plus 4, 0 plus 4. 0 plus 4, right? Okay, what are we going to do in the second iteration? Well, now we are going to look at the second bit, right? And exchange along that dimension. We are going to exchange along this dimension. Yeah? So all these communications are going to be. Okay, so we are only talking about 0 and 4, but the same thing happens with 1 and 5, 3 and 7, 2 and 6, right? That is clear. So all of them do exactly the same thing, right? So I'm concentrating on node 0 and seeing what happens, right? But similar stuff is happening on all the nodes. Okay, let's look at node 0. Now, in the second iteration, it's going to exchange data with 2, node number 2, right? So what I'm going to do is, let me just erase what is there on node number 4. 
and let me capture what is there on node number 2 at the end of the first iteration. But which elements? First tell me which elements will be there? 0 to 3, same 0, 1, 2, 3 will be there, right? Because if you look at 2 and 6 and you take a cut which is perpendicular to the link joining these two, you will separate 0, 1, 2, 3 from 4, 5, 6, 7, right? Okay, but for which nodes? 2 will have the data for 2 plus 6, 2 plus 6, 2 plus 6, two plus six and 2 plus 6, yeah? Now let us go to the next iteration. Now I am going to communicate these elements between 0 and 2. So which elements will 0 send to 2 and which elements will 2 send to 0? Uh, zero will send lower half. Lower half. Lower half. Again, just take a perpendicular to the link joining 0 and 2, right? So which elements get separated out? So now we are only interested in elements 0, 1, 2 and 3, right? We are not interested in 4, 5, 6, 7 because they are being handled elsewhere, okay? So between 0 and 2, what happens? What will 0 send to 2 and what will 2 send to 0? 0 will send 2 and 3 to 2 and 2 will send 0 and 1 to 0, right? Okay. So now what do I have at the end of iteration 2, right? What will be there on 0? 0 and 1, right? These two elements. 2 and 3 it has sent, it is not responsible for 2 and 3 anymore, right? So it will have 0 for which all nodes? 0 plus 2 plus 4 plus 6, right? And it can add them up, so it will add them up and this is what it will have, right? It will have the first element added for 0, 2, 4 and 6, clear? Yeah? Okay, and similarly for 2, so I am not writing for 2, let me just write for 1. What will be there on 1 at the end of the second iteration? It will be 0 and 1. Exactly, right? 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 and 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. And finally, what will we do in the third iteration? So let's come back here and see. What am I going to do in the third iteration? Well, I am going to communicate along this dimension right, where the last bit differs, right? By now you can see what happens, right? So what will I have on 0? I will have the 0th element, which is summed up over all the nodes, 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 1, right? So similarly, the first node will have the first element summed up across all the nodes, two will have the second element summed up across all the nodes and so on, right? Okay, so let's analyze this, right? So we'll just look at this example and analyze that when we have P nodes, what is happening? So what is the cost of the first iteration, right? In first iteration, what data am I communicating? Well, there's a startup cost of TS, right? And all the nodes are exchanging, how much data? Half the data. Right? And what is the data size? We are talking about reduce scatter. So reduce scatter, what is the data size we take? M times P, right? So M times P is the data size and I am exchanging half the data, right? MP by two times TW. Yeah, is this fine? This is the cost of the first iteration. What about the second iteration? Again, TS is the same. That's the startup cost and then how much data are we exchanging now? MP by 4, right? TW, you get the trend, right? And in the last, we'll have TS plus MTW. That will be the last iteration. So what is this cost? Well, there are log P iterations, yeah? So TS times log P, okay, plus TW, what is the factor associated with TW? MP by 2 plus MP by 4 and so on, right? So it's M times P minus 1, yeah? Take M common, it's nothing but P by 2 plus P by 4 all the way to 1, which is nothing but P minus 1, okay? 
Okay, that's it. That's the reduced scatter algorithm on the hypercube. So most of the algorithms on hypercube are pretty much similar, right? So let's look at some of the other collectives on the hypercube. Well, let's look at all reduced. What happens in all reduced? So we have some data on all the nodes and at the end, what do I want? I want to sum it up and I want the results to be available on all the nodes. Here we'll assume that the data size on each node is M because in the beginning and the end, you have the same data size on all the nodes, right? M, okay? And for the purpose of this example, I'll just assume M to be one, right? So you have only one element. So how are we going to implement all reduce? The algorithm is very, very similar to what we've discussed right now, right? Okay, now I'm only talking about one element. I'm going to denote it by E, right? And I'm going to use this to denote which node it resides on, right? So initially on node zero, I have the element of node zero, right? The first node will have the element on node one and the fourth node will have the element on node four, right? What do I want at the end? I want the result to be available on all the nodes, right? The summation to be available on all the nodes. Right, let me try the same thing, right? So in the first iteration, I'm going to communicate, zero will communicate with four, one with five, two with six, and three with seven, all right? And what is the data they communicate? Well, now we are only dealing with one element. Of course, if you have M elements, the same thing will happen. Just the size will become M, that's it, right? Let's just concentrate on zero and four. What will happen? So let me just get this one out of the way. So zero and four are going to exchange their data. So at the end of the first iteration, what do I have on node zero? So I will have E of zero plus four. Right, and on node four also I will have E of zero plus four. Okay, next iteration, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to communicate where the second bit differs along this dimension, yeah? So zero is going to communicate with two. Let me first write at the end of the first iteration, what was available on node number two? Two plus six. Yeah, because in the first iteration, two had communicated with six, right? Again, zero and two are going to exchange the element, right? So at the end of the second iteration, what will zero have? It will have E of zero plus two plus four plus six. Yeah, you see the similarity with the earlier one? The only difference is the size of the communication, right? So we'll, we'll come to that. All right. Similarly, node two will also get E of zero plus two plus four plus six. And then zero is going to communicate with one. Well, at the end of the second iteration, what does node number one have? It has the element summed up for one, three, five, and seven, yeah? So again, in the third iteration, we are going to exchange this data. And at the end of the third iteration, node zero will have E, zero plus one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven, yeah, clear? And the same thing is happening on all the nodes, right? So everybody has the summation by the end for that same element, right? And if I have M elements, I'll do the same thing with M elements. Let's analyze the cost. So what is the cost? How much data is being exchanged in the first iteration? TS plus MTW, right? What about the second iteration? Same. So every iteration I'm exchanging the same amount of data, right? This times log P. So the only thing that differs between reduce scatter and this is that the term associated with TW will change. Here it's log P and there it's P minus one. Why? Because there you start off with data which is of size M times P and then every iteration, the communication that you're doing keeps on reducing, right? By half. 
in case of all reduce, there is no reduction happening because everybody wants the entire result, right? 